Hello everyone, I want to welcome you all to this presentation where I'll be discussing how you can build CI-CD pipelines that support ARM architectures and processors. My name is Angel Rivera. I'm a developer advocate for CircleCI. And again, I'm super excited to be talking to you about ARM architectures and processors. As many of you know, ARM architectures have been around for quite some time, right? Processors have been embedded in hardware uh, in different uh, shapes and forms for, for some years now. Uh, and these are the more commonly uh, types of devices or hardware that uh, have ARM processors powering them. Uh, things such as mobile phones or smartphones, uh, tablets, Raspberry Pis, and IoT and smart devices such as TVs, appliances, wearables, and even certain medical devices. So again, ARM architectures have been around for quite some time. They're, they're in a lot of the devices that we use on a daily basis. And the reason for their high adoption in, in like the mobile space and other you know uh, d smart device type spaces is because of their low power consumption, right? So we're usually uh, carrying a phone around and that requires a battery. Uh, the processor's ability to process data using very minimal energy is one of the appealing uh, aspects of, of implementing or, or adopting uh, uh, ARM architecture within the mobile devices. Uh, certain operating systems have been supporting ARM architectures and processors for quite some time. And more recently, uh, Apple has basically uh, adopted the ARM pro processors uh, into their current and new uh, releases of their, uh, their MacBook laptop uh, uh, devices, as well as, uh, you know, any other kind of desktop or server devices that they're going to push out in the future. Uh, so having, you know, that popularity of, of adoption with ARM by Apple, uh, it's, it's just gaining more popularity in the industry. Now, um, servers have adopted ARM architectures and processors, uh, you know, for a while now. And this is not anything new, uh, but it is gaining popularity in, in the infrastructure spaces. So like the cloud providers are now uh, providing options uh, for developers to basically leverage, you know, ARM hardware within in their services. Uh, AWS Graviton2 is a good example of that. They've actually implemented a new instance type that uh, basically is powered by ARM processors that enables, again, the, the floodgates to open for um, the usage of ARM within these, these provider services. The problem is that ARM and x86 uh, processors uh, are not compatible, which leads to applications that were built for x86 uh, uh, processors are not going to function well with an ARM uh, uh, ecosystem, right? So that means um, the instruction sets are just different. So um, again, that basically means that the applications uh, have to be compiled for the processor that they're targeting. Uh, again, you know, code doesn't really care about where it's executed on, uh, but it does need to be compiled for whatever processor or environment it's going to be working on. In this case, um, we're going to be compiling applications for ARM. Uh, architectures and processors uh, and that must actually be done on the hardware itself right so that you can get the the proper instruction set for your application um, circle ci has recognized this and we're actually cre we've created a new uh, resource class is what we're calling it which is a compute node where you can execute your ci cd pipelines on arm hardware now um while doing that, um, it essentially you know we'll give the developer the ability again to you know, uh, compile their code and then uh, ensure, test their code, ensure that it, it's actually functioning specifically on the ARM architecture, right, or, the, or for the ARM processors, as well as the ability to do the same for an x86 architecture. So now we're just giving the developer a, a bunch more power to be able to, uh, you know, build their applications for whatever target uh, hardware uh, that they need to, uh, you know, build for. So now I'm going to jump into a demonstration of how you can build CICD pipelines and support uh, those builds using ARM platforms uh, within your CICD pipelines. So before we jump in, I wanted to uh, show you uh, some code. I have a project here uh, that essentially is a simple Node.js application. Uh, the application should not be your focus at this point. Um, what I'm gonna focus in on is how you can implement uh, uh, ARM capabilities into your CI/CD pipelines using the CircleCI uh, config.yaml file, which is uh, the way you define CI/CD pipelines in the CircleCI platform. Now, 
this is a uh, collapsed uh, version of the of the pipeline and the reason why I collapsed it was so that I can focus in on the bits that actually matter um, so this configuration uh, pipeline configuration has uh, four jobs in it one is obviously to run some tests the other one is to build a docker image and then the other two are, le are leveraging infrastructure's code a tool called terraform uh, created by uh, or maintained by created and maintained by a company called HashiCorp uh, so basically what's going to happen here is we're going to run some, build our code, run some tests. We're going to build a Docker image based off of uh, that code. And it's going to be an ARM uh, compatible Docker image. And then finally, we're going to deploy, we're going to create, uh, using infrastructure's code, create a uh, Amazon uh, Elastic Container uh, Service uh, uh, cluster. And that's going to be powered by ARM uh, compute nodes underneath you know that that are basically powering the cluster so finally we're going to destroy all of that using a manual uh button push uh and circle ci so let's jump into it real quick i just want to show you how you can easily implement this uh, in the run test job which i'm showing here uh we're going to create a machine executor which is um the resource class or the type of um of, of environment that we're going to execute our code on um, and we're going to be using an Ubuntu image, Linux Ubuntu image. And this is basically how you would just, you know, de specify that you want to use an ARM uh, compatible or ARM capable uh, uh, hardware or, or executor within your um, CICD builds. And it's just that simple, right? Just saying ARM.medium or ARM.large. Um, essentially, the system knows to spin up an ARM environment for you so that you can run your code. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into this code, but essentially, right, you're just looking at the, um, the important bits of how to build a CICD pipeline that supports ARM, and this is essentially how you would do it. You just tell uh, the resource class key that you want an ARM uh, uh, resource class, and then it will create that for you. So let's go ahead and just change the application. I just want to demonstrate how easy it is uh, to implement this uh, in your pipeline. So I'm going to go ahead and create a version two. Just change the value. Again, the application is not really the, the focus here. But we're going to go ahead and commit those changes. So let's do a git status. Make sure that our, our change, we do have some changes to commit. And we do. We're going to do a git commit. And then it's... The application app.js that we want to commit we'll give it a message uh with a lower m and then we're going to say uh, i don't know uh up uh, updated the version uh number which is what we did right uh and then we're going to go ahead and essentially just push our changes upstream to our version control system now this is where circle ci uh will jump in and uh, pick up the fact that you know we pushed some changes to our version control system and it detected those changes circle ci triggered that pipeline build that we had in our uh, config.yaml file so all of these things are now running right inside of our pipeline and they're running on uh, arm-based uh, executors or hardware so while that's happening, let's go ahead and look at the dashboard real quick so that we can see exactly what, what's going on. Um, I'm running three jobs in parallel, right? So this is what that kind of looks like. Uh, and as you can see, we're running our tests, we're running, uh, we're building our Docker image, and we're also creating the AWS infrastructure that we're going to deploy to. So the initial segments of our build have completed. Uh, and if we want to dig into one of these, let's go ahead and look at the do build Docker image job. Essentially, what we've done here is created an ARM uh, compatible Docker image, right? So that we can deploy this to ARM hardware. Uh, and what we have here is essentially, um, you know, the uh, designator for the executor, which is where the environment where we, you know, built our code and built our Docker image. Um, and again, right, it's an ARM a Linux medium uh, as opposed to an x86 platform. Now let's take a look at what exactly happened within our pipeline again. So we've run our tests, we've built the Docker image, and now let's take a look at our deploy to AWS ECS. Uh, so with the Terraform uh, application running, again, we're using an ARM executor here, uh, and it's built the infrastructure uh, 
using Terraform on an AWS cloud. So let's go ahead and just see if our application is actually running. Now, remember, we updated the application to version two. So hopefully, oh, it's still running version one. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what's going on there. I'm going to go ahead and click in here on our cluster and then I'm look at the tasks because that's what we're looking at. So now we have tasks that are uh, updated. They look like they're running. It may have been that um, they were still in the process of updating. So the way it works is because of its scaling. And you can see here, right? Um, basically, uh, it's a deployment. So it's just replacing the old containers with the new containers, which contain this release of the application. So let's go ahead and try it again and see if we can get to our version two of the application, which is version two. Uh, great. So we've deployed uh, this application uh, with uh, ARM capable Docker images that were built on ARM, CircleCI's ARM resource class uh, executors. And then also we've used Terraform to build out a Amazon ECS uh, cluster based off of EC2 instances that are uh, powered by the Amazon Graviton 2 ARM uh, instances, right? So now everything's kind of end-to-end -end ARM. You know that your application compiled in ARM infrastructures. You know that your application has been deployed or yeah, deployed using a Docker container to an ECS cluster that is also uh, based off of uh, ARM-capable or ARM-powered compute nodes. So you have a full end-to-end -end, uh, experience there with ARM, and you know that your application is basically fully compatible with the ARM architecture. Now, coming back to the pipeline, I wanted to show you that, you know, these are three things that ran in parallel. They ran pretty quickly, as you can see. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the uh, underlying cloud infrastructure or, or the deployment environment, the ARM, or the environment you're deploying to, to actually, re you know, change the application and update the, the the new version through a rolling release or a rolling deployment i should say uh so finally i just wanted to show you this last bit which is basically where you get to uh ha you can instantiate or, or define a step in your in your pipeline that uh, adds some manual capabilities so this this manual step requires someone to actually click a button in this case it's the approve this job and once you click this button, it just it's like a continue a block, and then it continues to the next job in the in the uh, pipeline, which in this case is going to be destroying all of that awesome AWS ECS clusters and all that stuff that we built. So let's go ahead and click on that button so that we can destroy our infrastructure since we don't need it anymore, right? This is for demonstration purposes. But what it'll essentially do again is to go into Amazon and terminate all of the resources and all of the objects that it created that were needed for our ECS cluster. Things like VPC, security groups, IAM roles, uh, the, the Graviton2 uh, cluster nodes that we created right to support to host our, our application in our ECS cluster. So I click the approval button, the destroy process is happening. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening actually. Uh, and it's essentially running Terraform right, and destroying all this cloud infrastructure that was created in our previous uh, job within this pipeline. Now, when this is completed, uh, all of that stuff will be terminated uh, that we created in Amazon will be gone um, and not uh, functioning anymore. And again, right, this will have a, should lead to a green uh, build. Uh, but it, I just wanted to show you the power of, uh, you know, the CircleCI pipelines and how it can be uh, used to implement ARM architectures so that now developers can build their applications with confidence using ARM uh, processors as well as deploying to ARM uh, uh, powered infrastructures such as Amazon ECS on Amazon's Graviton to uh, compute nodes. So I want to say thank you to all of you for attending. And if there's any questions or comments or just want to have a, a chat, please uh, hit me up on uh, Twitter. My, my handle is at punk data. And once again, thank you all.